Hello, good morning, and welcome to a brand new episode. This week is all about an update on how my tiling has been going in the farmhouse. It's been a bit of an interesting week, the last week as well, and a lot has been going on. On my work front, on the farm front, it's been a little bit difficult to juggle everything the last couple of weeks, to be very frank. In the last week, as I mentioned, a lot has transpired. Two big events. One was really, really sad. For those of you that follow me on Instagram or Facebook, you would have seen that on Sunday last week, I was going outside to feed all the animals in the morning as I usually do. And Pidgey came to say good morning and then he took a flight as he usually does every morning before I feed him to stretch his little wings and come flying back. He's always very excited and then he puffs himself up and then he comes to eat his little breakfast. He was taking a while longer to come back that morning and I was waiting and I started looking around in the sky for him but I couldn't see him anywhere. I then heard an eagle scream in joy and I knew, I just knew. Sadly, Pidgey was taken by an eagle that day. I ran out to try and see if I could save him, but the eagle was in the neighbor's farm. Still, I ran out and I tried to see if I could do anything. But as I got there, the eagle took off and I think it must have been with Pidgey because I looked around for his little body and I just couldn't find it. So it's been a really, really sad week for me. He played quite a big role in my life, even though he was just a little being. Every, every time I come outside, Pidgey would be there coming to check on me, coming to say hello, coming to coo. It was really, really cute and it's been a lot quieter on the farm without him being there speaking to me all day long so his presence is definitely missed and it's very very sad the other thing that happened in the last week was that i finally got my door delivered my new entry door that was custom made that is going to replace that horrific well not so horrific but that's going to replace replace that temporary door so that i can finally start using that entryway again the temporary door has been starting to fall off the temporary frame that was made for it it wasn't meant to last this long it was put up in september last year when the big renovation started so that i could have an entry point to come in and out while the other side was getting demolished so it's been it's had a good lifespan since september um but it's really i can't use it at all anymore i can't even open or close it anymore because it's really hanging on the hinges at the moment so um it's time to get replaced and just in the nick of time the door has arrived i'm not going to be using the same boulders to replace that door or to fit that door because of what happened with my other door of course so I'm going to be relying on some heavy lifter friends of mine to hopefully come and help fit that door for me. It was a bit of a mission when the door arrived. It took two trucks and I always warn them, my road is narrow, my gate does not really accept anything larger than a van to come through here. And the first delivery attempt didn't work out because it was a big truck and he made it halfway down the road to my farm. The next day another truck came it was a little bit smaller but still too big he managed to come 10 meters further than the first truck so what had to happen was myself and the delivery driver had to carry it all the way down and into my entry farm into my entry gate on the farm we left it by the gate and then the next morning i decided that i needed to bring it into the farm to bring it into my storeroom at least because there was rain on the way and i didn't want it sitting out in the rain um, because it was in obviously it's covered in a cardboard box and that sitting in the rain will damage the box and then it makes it more difficult to transport so as we say in Afrikaans a boer maak a plan and I made a plan to carry that door by myself 
on my little wheelie contraption and I kind of wheeled it from the entry gate into the storeroom. It took over an hour, <laughs> but I got it done and it was quite heavy and quite a mission to get that brought into the storeroom. And for the three days after that, <laughs> I was a little bit sore. But I did manage to get it in there and now it can wait there until my friends can come and help me fit that door. But today's video is all about the tiling and the progress I have made on the tiling. I was really, really hoping, so here comes a spoiler alert, that I would be finished by this video, even though it's been a couple of weeks since I've been doing the tiling and continuing the tiling. As I mentioned, spoiler alert, it is not finished. But I'm excited to show you guys how much I have been able to do and how much has been done since I attempted to do that tiling and start that tiling. As I mentioned, a lot of things has been on my plate in the last couple of weeks. Work has been taking up a lot of my time. And it's always interesting because most people think that being a digital marketer is all fun and games. You just get to sit and play on your computer all day. And they always associate it with working on Facebook or Instagram or any of those fun channels. And although I'm a holistic marketer and I can do all of that, my work actually is a little bit more technical than that. I'm a search marketer by trade, by speciality. So most of my clients come to me for search marketing and that is really mentally taxing. After a day of trying to noodle things out and making plans and problem solving, by the end of the day, I'm quite mentally tapped out and mentally taxed. And uh, although it's sometimes nice to get out of your head and then do something with your hands, by then I'm so tired that all I want to do is really nothing. So, and um, on weekends, what's been taking up my time is I usually edit my videos on a Saturday, which only leaves Sunday to really tile or get anything else done that I need to do renovation wise. And um, lately there's been a couple of new markets and things, and it's been nice to get out and spend some time with friends as well and just get out a little bit more and see all the new markets and the festivals that are arriving for spring and summer so it's been very difficult to choose between renovating and getting out and about and just experiencing new things so there's always a balance in life and um, anyway things have been growing slow but without further ado here we go let me show you what's happened on the tiling side is Girl Meets Farm. So today I continue with my tiling effort. I've had to move things around a little bit because I now have things taking up the space on the other side where I wanted to first finish. So I'm going to start tiling on this side of the structure because firstly I've stashed all of my first wine batch uh, in that corner. It is the coolest corner in the house so the wine will stay good there. They have to be kept in even temperatures. Usually heat does disrupt the flavor profile so I've had to put them there and now they're taking up all that space. Secondly, I ordered a couch. <laughs> I got so trigger happy, I couldn't wait. It went on sale, so I went ahead and bought it, thinking that I would have my tiling finished before it arrived, so I can move everything to this side and then start on the other side. This sofa is eventually going to go on the side that I'm staying in, in front of the wonderful fireplace but it arrived early i should be happy i am so happy and excited but it has to now stay on that side until i finish the tiling and then i can move it around luckily it's not too heavy and there's a good space there for it for it to go but that is not its final destination it will actually go on the other side but yeah so I can walk on these because 
they have dried over the last week. Um, when the guys delivered the, the box now as well, thankfully they were able to bring the truck all the way in here to bring the couch to me. They did kind of fall over some of the tiles, but nothing broke except for some of the white clippy things which do break incredibly easily, but that's okay. So, and the tiles seem fine, so I'm going to continue on that side now and try and do a couple of more rows this weekend. Let's get at it! That slight little height difference makes a big difference when you're trying to tile everything even and straight. So everywhere where there's a dip in the floor, it really does affect the tiling.
removed all the clips from the middle section just to make it a bit easier for me to walk across the floor when I start doing the sides of the room. But removing it for sure, you can start seeing just what a noob I am. The early tiles that I did are super messy and there's big pieces of grout sticking or mortar sticking out everywhere. With the newer sections that I've done, I've definitely started working a lot cleaner. So thankfully, you know, I guess you learn as you go and there's a lot less to clean up, but there's still pieces to clean up where the white clips were and the red clips were between the tiles. Um, but yeah, I guess one learns as you go and I'll just have to clean it before I grout it. It is what it is. Otherwise, I think it looks relatively good. And this is where I currently am with the tiling. Um, these are all dry so I can work on them. I have managed to finish all the way onto the side here and it looks so good to me. I can't wait to finish this off. I even managed to come around the stonework here but I had to stagger this because what I haven't mentioned is that we had some rain a couple of weeks ago and it was quite a heavy storm. You will not believe I'm still having issues with this door. When it rained, the water actually came through here and another area in the corner behind these tiles. And that is because it was never really fixed properly or cemented in properly and um, so it looks like yeah I know it's completely overgrown with weeds but on the other side let me show you this is kind of what it looks like it is I mean this piece I think is even loose so no wonder that there is water coming through here. So what I'm going to have to do is somehow I'm going to have to fix the cement below the door on this side. And then I need to put a sealer on this side before I can actually finish the tiling into this corner. Um, yeah, so that needs to happen. And then I've managed to also come all the way as far as I possibly can to this wall here. Yes, I know there's a lot of stuff in here. Um, we can't go all the way against the wall because, well, tiles move, things shift around. And of course, none of my walls are straight. So I'm still thinking about what I'm actually gonna be doing on the edges all the way around to tie it off really, really nicely. And then, as you can see here, I mean, it's really not straight. But yeah, so this is the area where I still have to finish my tiling. There's probably about two or three rows to go there before I hit the turnaround on the on that stone wall. Here, why did I not put this tile? Well, I get really tired after doing two rows of tiling and when I get tired, of course, you know, you probably just don't pay attention enough. And by the fifth tile I had broken, I kind of gave up on finishing that one. Um, so I'll attempt that when I continue with the rest of the tiling on this little end. On this side, I've had to stagger as well because what's happening here is I first need to pour the concrete in this little section to bring it level with this side so and in order for me to do that i need the new door fitted so that i can actually go around that door come in on this door and then leave this little piece of cement to set <laughs> So there's a lot of contingencies, there's a lot of things that are dependent on something else. Um, yeah, but 
we're so close there and I really, really want to finish this off because I have a friend coming to visit me in a couple of weeks and um, she's not putting pressure on me. She's actually coming to stay here maybe for a couple of days. I wanted this side to be a little bit more finished so that I can either put a couch or a cot or something in here, a camping bed, um, in here so that one of us can actually sleep in this room uh, with my main bed being on that side of the structure. But um, yeah, I don't know, I am I really am trying to get that done, but yeah, there's just always something. So we'll see how far I actually manage to get in the next couple of weeks moving forward. The other reason I need to kind of rush this is it looks like that, it looks like I may need to travel to South Africa because I need to renew my passport. Although I can do it from the South African Embassy in Lisbon, the problem is that currently with a backlog, it's taking on average about 12 months. Some people are super lucky and it takes four to six months, but there's no guarantee in that. The other thing is that you have to surrender your passport. And I don't particularly like the idea of surrendering my passport and I'm not having it if I needed it for any kind of emergency travel or whatever the situation may be. So it's going to be a lot faster for me to just fly back to South Africa, get it done in South Africa, fly back with the new passport. So if I do that, if I do decide to go that route, which is a lot more expensive, but it's kind of guaranteed and faster, if I go that route, I'll of course need house sitters to watch over my two little fur kids as well. And um, I want to have this in a better state than what I currently have it in at the moment. So that'll be exciting. Um, this is the couch that was standing on the side here. I had to move it, of course, so that I can finish the tiling on the side. I got so trigger happy. This is a couch I've had in mind or had my eye on for some time. So I managed to get it at a discount. They were running a sale, so I got it. But eventually this couch is going to be in that area, which will be the lounge area. But the size of the box is pretty much the size of my bed as well. And the last uh, couple of weeks ago, another friend of mine actually came to visit. She didn't stay here, but she came to visit me on the farm and she gave me a really good idea. Now, some of you may know that I have been thinking about how I'm actually going to position my bed and my desk space in this area. Originally, I wanted my bed to be in this area. As you can see, I even put in the electrical plug points on that would have been on either side of the bed. But because this area of wall protrudes so much more than I'd originally intended for it to protrude, and putting a bed here may be a little bit weird coming into the room and then trying to get to that door. So it wasn't the best idea. I then thought about putting the bed over there, but that was where I was going to put my cupboard and I didn't put any plug points there because it was a, going to be a plug a, a cupboard originally. And on this side, it was originally going to be a smaller second bedroom that would have been almost two meters across up to there. There's actually a plug point behind the wine bottles over there. That would have just been enough for a three-quarter bed down this way. But the new plan is that I'm going to turn this into my office side. So this would kind of be where my little desk would go. And my friend from Lisbon gave me a really cool idea. So I've been thinking about it and thinking about it and I think that it could work. The plan would be to retain both a cupboard and my bed this way so that the bed faces out this door into this beautiful view. How we're going to do that is um, to use a design similar to what you may have seen in some hotel designs where the bed kind of faces onto the cupboard area. And now what I want to do is I want to do an open cupboard 
that doesn't necessarily have cupboard doors. So it will really just be shelves and hanging space. And my plan is that I want to try and tie the ceiling in with the space. So I'm thinking of building a wooden wardrobe with shelf space and hanging space double. And I want the shelves to be the same width and I'm going to stain it the same color. And then the actual structure will then be white. So it'll be white and this beautiful dark mahogany wood with baskets to just kind of keep the clothes in. And then enough space to pretty much, pretty much exactly where this couch is standing now. So there's enough space here to build my, my little wardrobe area, have a little walkway, maybe a mirror at the back there, some lighting. Then the bed will face this way. So the headboard will be here. It might not necessarily be a pretty headboard. So at the moment, I'm thinking of doing like a slatted styled divider and then or a screen behind the, the bed and then the bed will face that way. So in the end, what we're looking at is one large open plan. As you walk in here, you'll see the bed here, the back of the bed, the wardrobe will be here. This will all be open and it will be easy to walk around the bed to get to the door. This will be here and we'll get to whatever that's going to be one day. Maybe another little sitting area or something. But more on that when I get to that. I'm already excited about this project, but I've yet to finish the floor. <laughs> Isn't that how renovation goes, right? <laughs> anyway. Let's see how far I get in the next couple of weeks and I'll be really excited to bring in that progress once I'm done. See you next time.